Hi, my name is Fred Stokes. I'm a member of the USO Board of Governors, the Senior Vice President of Pro Sales and Services at Lowe's Home Improvement, and a proud veteran. I would like to personally welcome you to Transition to the Trades, presented by the USO and Generation T, powered by Lowe's Military. Lowe's and the USO have a 10 plus year history together, focused on supporting the military community, honoring our veterans, and assisting causes like workforce development and affordable housing. We are incredibly excited to bring these virtual workshops to all USO centers worldwide. Today you will hear from industry professionals about making a transition from the military life to potential lucrative careers in the skills trades. Specifically careers in the construction trades, electrical, HVAC, plumbing, appliance repair, and more. By 2028, there will be over 3 million unfilled jobs in the skilled trades. Good paying careers for entrepreneurs looking for stability and work-life balance. Today, for every five tradespeople that leave the skilled trades, only one person is waiting to fill that opening. This is called a labor crisis in the construction industry, driving up production costs and extending the amount of time to build new homes and provide services like air conditioning repair. Recognizing these issues, Lowe's created Generation T in 2018 to help revitalize the skilled trades and creating career opportunities for people like you. Generation T is a collaboration of over 80 national partners working to influence how Americans view skilled trades careers. Providing education about potential careers and information and connections to training programs and local businesses looking to train up and coming professionals. Our hope is to provide you with information and opportunities to help make the transition a little bit easier. We hope that you enjoy the following program and find the information helpful. From all of us at Lowe's, congratulations on taking the first step and best of luck to you as you move forward in your journey. All right, thank you, Fred, for the warm welcome. And thank you all for joining today's session to learn more about starting your own business in the skilled trades. My name is Lauren Norman, and I'm from our Lowe's Pro Customer Engagement Team here in beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina. We're excited that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to join us from all over the world to learn more about rewarding careers and business opportunities in the trades. As Fred just mentioned, our country is facing a massive shortage of skilled trades professionals. Our workforce is aging and over 32% of our pros will retire in the next seven to 10 years. Our younger generations have steered away from the trades with a misperception that there is only one pathway to success through a four year college degree. In fact, only 14% of high schools today have a carpentry program or a career in technical education offering to be able to educate students and their parents about rewarding careers in the trades. With the shortage of new talent entering the industry, that leaves over 3 million jobs projected to be open by 2028, all of which are essential to ensuring that all of us as consumers have running water, lights that turn on, appliances that function, and that our families stay warm when it's freezing outside or even cold when it's hot in the summer. As you think about what is next for your career, there are so many choices that are waiting for you in the trades and the opportunities are truly endless. On the next slide, you'll see that as you've begun, you know, to make this transition, you already have a lot of experience through the service. You have obtained a extensive technical training and hands-on experience. You know what it takes to work on a team and be an effective communicator. You have dedication in serving others and helping your community. You have shown that you can work well under pressure and solve problems. And you also have demonstrated a strong work ethic and drive to succeed. Our next slide shows us just some of the great career pathways that are out there in the trades. This is not everything and there are many more options and opportunities, but this shows you the variety of roles needed in carpentry, electrical, installation, plumbing, and site management, which can also lead to all types of management roles and potentially owning your own business. So on the next slide, if you've thought about starting your own business, you have come to the right place today. 
As a business owner, you can be your own boss, you make your own schedule, you can run your own crew, you help others, and you're able to provide a really great lifestyle to support your family. In fact, 11% of the small businesses in construction today in the United States are owned by veterans. And did you know that 10% of millionaires in the United States have earned their fortune through the skilled trades? That's a fun fact for the day. We're so excited that you're here today to learn more about the business side of the trades and hear directly from a pro who started his own business with one truck out of his garage and now employs over 100 people and technicians. So before you get to hear from William and Mike, we invite you to sit back and watch a short video that highlights the future of the trades and how we use technology and innovative solutions every day to build, create, and master the art of your trade. We are Generation T. They said our capes didn't show to enough class to be heroes. They said we were the butt of the joke because we didn't attend their ivies. But they forgot to mention, debt is not the prereq to living the dream. You don't have to lean on a desk when you have the drive to design your own league. By design, these hands summon creativity. Technology and trade. Two converging paths, Mother Earth and Mother Board, shaping the terrain for the next generation. We are the rightful journeymen, the waymakers. When the banks crash and the stocks fall, we set the bearing straight. Scrape our knees on sunbeams, hold families together within the framework of our mind, turn businesses into our business. With the vision that keeps the lights on, we build a better world out of thin air. This is the what if for the future masters of trade. The electricians and bricklayers, solar power technicians, energy auditors, tiny home builders for the ones who don't care about the color of a collar. Craftsmanship is a calling. What if? The Vaysayers were so worried about making it in society, they forgot to value the hands that make the society. What if you could live the life you've always dreamed right from where you are? Your career choice isn't a matter of right or wrong. It's a matter of knowing what you can do. There's work to be done. Are you ready? All right. Well, welcome everybody to Transition to the Trades, starting your own business in skilled trades. Uh, my name is Mike Piper. I run our Lowe's military recruiting here at Lowe's, and I'm a proud Air Force veteran. Um, and really excited to be here today to talk with you about the skilled trades industry. Um, and really excited to actually have uh, William uh, Reardon here with us from Reliable Services to talk about his journey um, as he kind of moved from uh, a very small pickup truck pro to where he is now where he employs 100 people. So without further ado, let me go ahead and bring in William here. Uh, William, uh, how you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks. Hope you are. Good. Doing well. Doing well. Before we get started, before I have you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, i do two quick reminders to everybody in the audience. Uh, first, if you have questions as we're going through this, please make sure you put them in the question and answers uh, inside the Zoom and we're going to get to them. Uh, you have somebody who has made the journey from very, very much starting from paper to where he is now with, with 100 employees. So please ask is whatever questions you want, uh, throw them in the question and answers. Uh, we'll be able to go through those during this time. And just to spur up some engagement, because I'm pretty sure the chat's kind of quiet right now. Question and answers are kind of quiet. If you want to go ahead and post in the chat where you're uh, tuning in from, whether it be uh, North Carolina, somewhere in the United States, maybe you're uh, in Japan or, or somewhere across the world. Just go ahead and put in where you're, you're tuning in from down there. 
Um, so that way we can uh, see where you're, 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 you're at and kind of go from there. All right, William, so let's get started. Let's start off with, we'll start with the easy questions and then we'll start to move a little bit into the, the more business questions. So why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started. Uh, I'm William Reardon, um, owner of Reliable Services uh, and president. Um, so started uh, the business uh, 20 years ago. Um, actually uh, got out of high school, didn't know what I was gonna do. I wasn't a school type of kid and actually went into the Marine Corps um, when I was 18. Uh, made it about two and a half months and uh, broke my right ankle. Um, dropped to a PCP platoon um, for, it was gonna be about a month and a half, I guess, uh, until it healed. Um, and, or they gave me the option to obviously um, re-enlist. So <clears throat> I took that option. Uh, I, was, I was down in the dumps, left my you know, whole platoon. And um, so, you know, I was gonna re-enlist, but then when I got home, a buddy of mine's father owned a plumbing company um, and sort of, uh, you know, asked him, hey, you need some help and sort of started as an apprentice there working with him. Um, you know, I think it was three and a half years I worked there, loved plumbing. Uh, it was a dream of mine to always own a plumbing company. Um, but then something else happened and I got an opportunity to start a car cleaning company and I did that. Uh, then fast forward, you know, 15 years later, uh, a close friend of mine was doing some business with Lowe's and Lowe's was looking for a plumber. Um, so I went and interviewed and, and made it through all the interviews and sort of started a, uh, you know, started doing installations, plumbing installations for Lowe's. Um, I think it was about 19 years ago. Wow. Very cool. Yeah, and I think that's something, you know, um, as we kind of go through, we'll, we'll talk about, because I don't think a lot of people, I mean, at least even when I started at Lowe's um, four years ago, I had no idea that we even had that kind of opportunity for individuals. So um, take us through that, like, because you, you brought it up, right? You you've, you had a dream to start plumbing. Um, you transitioned into the, into the trades, and then you were able to connect with <laughs> Lowe's and be able to, what, be provided jobs by Lowe's? Yeah, so it's sort of funny. So um, obviously Lowe's installs anything that you can think of when it comes to a house, right? So uh, they were looking for um, a plumber um, to install water heaters, uh, faucets, toilets, <clears throat> and I'd had the experience to do so. Um, and yeah, they just they send you a job. So I started with one truck. Um, and, you know, back then uh, you'd get a PO over the fax machine, right? So uh, I remember, you know, the, you know, we'd get a couple POs, you know, three or four a day, but uh, then on Saturdays and Sundays, you know, you'd come in on Monday morning and it'd be, you know, there'd be 25 pages in the fax machine, right? So that's sort of how it started um, <clears throat> and started doing it out of one store. Um, and it just, it sort of progressed, you know, um, I use the saying, I bleed blue, right? So I would take on any job, um, any time, you know, if somebody needed it done on Saturday or Sunday, whatever was needed. Um, so Lowe's quickly learned that I was the go-to guy um, and then just gradually grew that, um, you know, into more stores and, and found guys uh, and, and women to, to do what I did and trained them. Um, you know, it, it worked out, it worked out well. Fantastic. No, that's awesome. Um, and obviously you've grown that, you know, business from what it started at as a, as a little pickup truck, truck pro. Um, but tell us about your business today. Like how, what has that grown into just so we can give the audience a little bit of a, a sneak peek into what could be, uh, based off of this and what the potential is here. Sure. So today, um, we're licensed plumbing, electrical, mechanical, general contracting because of Lowe's, obviously Lowe's, uh, had a need, um, and uh, we filled it. So again, now we run uh, six markets, which is about 91 stores. Uh, we're in three platforms for Lowe's. We're in the water heater program, the appliance program, uh, and the cabinet program. So just to put it in short, if you go to Lowe's and um, want a water heater uh, or appliances installed uh, or cabinets, we're the company that's going to do it in a you know 400 mile radius about 91 stores, I believe. Wow. All right. Yeah, that's that's very much more significant than <laughs> your pickup truck and in your garage uh, to this now. That's that's a pretty big jump. Yeah. Uh, but very cool to know that like there, there's like that much growth opportunity there. Um, 
So uh, in the beginning, we said, hey, people uh, that are on, uh, tell us where you're coming from. So just so we have a, a general idea here, William, we have people tuning in today uh, from Virginia, from Florida, from Oklahoma City. I see JBLM. I see Germany. I see Hawaii. Aloha, Hawaii. Um, so really excited to have everybody here uh, to be able to learn a little bit about this. But with that, like everybody is all across the country. So everybody's got a different type of day, right? Like everybody's days are different. There's different things that you do. There's different things that are incorporated. In it. So what is a typical day for someone like yourself who runs their own business? Uh, it's sort of like the seasons, it changes, right? So again, um, you know, with this pandemic lately, it's been navigating through different rules and regulations that we have to follow. Um, uh, it's dealing with, you know, personnel issues, again, sort of like, um, you know, a lot of the military, the, the, the managers in the military, they're dealing with personnel issues or dealing with uh, different decisions that have to be made, whether it's do we keep, you know, uh, some of our fleet vans a year longer, or do we go ahead and get rid of them, um, trying to find the best prices, um, you know, on different material. Uh, we have an apprenticeship program, so I, I, I'm involved in that. Um, and it, it's tough for me as a business owner because I'm a hands-on kind of guy. So I love to use tools and I love to work with my hands, obviously. So um, it was hard for me to transition uh, into the growth just because I had to come out of the field to be able to run the business versus, you know, I, I like the field. I, I, uh, my guys would kid with me that uh, they don't want to see me on a job because I'm going to take the tools out of their hands and I want to do it. I want to do it. So um, again, typical day, uh, Again, it changes with the seasons, but like my day to day, uh, we had a couple corporate employees that I had to go up or uh, corporate customers that I had to go up and intend to and, and meet and um, check on, uh, went to lunch, uh, met a couple other um, businessmen that were in the uh, in the trades and, and they, they're wanting to get into the apprenticeship program. So we, we met for a couple hours at lunch uh, and then I get to come do this wonderful uh, interview with you, Mike. Fantastic. No, and I'm glad you're here. I mean, it sounds like it's a pretty flexible work-life balance, which is really nice. And I mean, that when you look at this kind of uh, opportunity to own your own business, it's one of the things that a lot of people really, really like about it is it's, it's really you're in control of a lot of your time and what you do oh, yeah. and how you use that time. 100%. Yeah. And again, uh, I it, it helps you choose to be, you know, the, the, the harder that you work, the smarter you work, the more successful you can be. But you know, it, it, it's just all what you're willing to put into it. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So you mentioned um, the apprenticeship piece, and that's where I want to go now. I want to kind of go into talking about that, because I think that's one of the things like, yes, you know, you want to start your own business, right? Like, okay, I have this, the entrepreneur spirit, I want to do this. Um, and I, trade skills is ripe right now for it, right? Like, oh. there's, there's so much opportunity yeah. in this area for even not only plumbers, but even just handymen, right? Like somebody that can go in and hang a few things, a few curtains, or maybe fix some some molding. But how do you get started in plumbing today? Like, what is the training? What is the experience needed? Like, what does that all encompass for somebody to start that? You know, so it's it's different state to state, but in, in North Carolina, you got to have four thousand hours. Um, two thousand of it can be classroom. The other two thousand has to be on the job before you can even sit for a license. Again, other states are different. Um, so again, the, the, if you wanted to be a plumber, you would want to hook up with a company um, and, and they're out there. So again, to, to go get a, a job at any, it doesn't matter what trade it is, we're talking plumbing now, but I don't, <laughs> you know, the, you, you, the, she shared with the video uh, how shorthanded we are right now. Um, so the best thing to do is go get a job uh, and it could be a weekend job. It could be um, you know, plumbers work at night too. So again, whenever they have time, um, and go get a job and start learning the trade, right. So start learning it, um, uh, and put your time in, right. So all trades, you don't have to be licensed again, your, your main trades, your mechanical, electrical, uh, plumbing, general contracting, but to hang a lighter, to do handyman stuff, you really don't have to, um, be licensed. Therefore, you know, uh, some of the people uh, on the vid, you know, on the call here could go tomorrow and start their own business because they're handy, right? So uh, depending on what you want to do, but to, if, if you want to get in the plumbing industry, you would want to go work for a company to get that experience. 
Perfect. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And, and that's a great point, right? That every state is different. Like there are different aspects to it. Um, there's different things that kind of go into it. And even regions are different, right? So there's different Absolutely. aspects and certifications around that. Um, but, you know, getting in an apprenticeship or getting into a company to be able to learn all that is, is a phenomenal way to kind of get started and kind of go through that. Um, so that's great. I love talking about that, but let's talk a little bit about business a little bit. Let's uh, switch from the training aspect because most of the questions that we have in, in the queue right now from the audience is around the business aspect, which um, obviously is usually where you're going to get a lot of questions, right? Because you're starting to look into it and you're like, oh man, oh, yeah. so I have to have what and have to have, okay, I got to have this, oh, okay, that. Um, but really, there's just so many different things that you got to think of. And I think the first one is, how did you choose the business you wanted to start? Like, that's like the beginning, right? What do you, how did you choose what you wanted to start? So again, um, plumbing wasn't actually the first business that I owned. I actually had an opportunity. I knew, again, you, you made a comment earlier about the entrepreneurial spirit, right? I, I knew I didn't want to work for anybody, right? I wanted to be the boss. Um, not that I didn't like taking direction, but, uh, I like setting the pace. Um, so I knew that was what I wanted to do. Uh, and, and coming out of plumbing, I, I actually got an opportunity to buy into a business um, and I couldn't pass it up. Again, the car cleaning business. So that's how I sort of got into that business. But my dream was always to own the plumbing business, right? So when I had that opportunity, um, I, I, I jumped in full fledged, right? But coming out of the plumbing company at 20 years old, uh, 21 years old, um, to, to buy this business, it was tough, right? Because again, you're young, um, didn't really know what I was doing, right? Um, but there's avenues out there to help you, right? So to, you know, if you went online right now, and again, remember, I'm 47 years old. So again, that long time, there was no internet. There was no research. You couldn't ask Google a question and, and didn't give you 13 answers by 13 different people. So, um, now it's a lot simpler to start a business. It really is. Again, you need a business license. You need a tax ID number, uh, depending on what state you're in or what country you're in. Uh, there's different rules and regulations, um, but it, it's, it's fairly simple. You know, anybody could go start a business, really. <clears throat> oh, that's, that's, that's perfect. And, and you kind of mentioned this, right? You said uh, when you started, there wasn't Google. There wasn't really all of that. So outside of that, let's, let's talk, let's talk about like, you, you've had a lot of lessons learned, right? One of the questions we have here is um, what should an individual do to, to improve their career prospects as a small business owner? But I'm going to add to that, like, what is it that they can do for to increase their, their prospects as a small business owner? But what lessons have you learned that have helped you be so successful? So, so, so the, 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 the unfortunate part is when you own your own business, uh, lessons are learned when it costs money, right? So when it costs you money, uh, that's the most valuable lesson. And again, um, I'm a good listener. So uh, through my lifetime, I, I've listened a lot and, and I've taken bits and pieces of, of what people have said, but uh, lessons are learned through um, when it costs you money. Again, it's a, it's a good lesson and you'll never do it again. Um, you know, some of the lessons... Um, would be to, to not just jump in, right? To research more. Um, I'm one of those guys that uh, I'm quick to pull the trigger. Um, so the most important lesson that I've learned in business is one, um, seek counsel, if that makes sense. Talk to multiple people. Don't just go with your gut right off the bat. Um, you know, with all the information out here now and that's available through the internet, um, there's tons of resources to be able to research um, sort of anything that you want to do, any trade that you want to get into or any, uh, again, decision that's coming up. Um, again, don't always think that, uh, that you're getting the best deal. For instance, if you're shopping for insurance, get three or four quotes, right? Uh, if you're shopping for a van, get three or four quotes. So any decision that you're making, seek counsel, whether it's uh, people that you know, resources that you have within your, your uh, relationships and or outside that, just, just get, get multiple viewpoints and multiple options to be able to choose. No, oh, I think that's, that's great. Cause 
you know, one of the things that that leads to, and I think, um, and I know this isn't something that we have right on here, but it's something that I always point out when I'm on these uh, transition to the trades aspects and kind of uh, where this leads is that you're seeking all that counsel um, and seeking those quotes, but you're in the community. You're meeting people. You're getting to know people. You can probably, I bet you any, I bet you any money, William, you can drive down a street in your area and you could probably point the five houses on that one street that you guys have probably done some kind of work in. And you could probably know or run into somebody at, at a grocery store and be able to say, Hey, how you doing? Cause you've done work in their, in, in their house. So right. can you tell me just a little bit about that kind of community impact that you have that where you can kind of get involved with the community by being a small business owner? Yeah, so again, it goes to that entrepreneur, your, um, you know, what's inside of you, right? So if someone's wanting to start their own business, more than likely they love people, they want to help people grow, they want to get involved. Um, so again, uh, there's a lot of like this, you know, for instance, love to do things like this. Uh, I get calls, probably four or five calls a week uh, from technicians in the field wanting to help, you know, they'll go to a customer's house and they can tell that, hey, Customer doesn't have all the money for the upgrades needed or whatever, so we'll just sort of give it to them. Um, it makes a difference, and, and you never know who you're going to impact by what you do. Um, and I'll say this, you know, the military taught me not only to be a man, but it taught me to be honorable, right? I use that word a lot, honorable, because it, it encompasses so many things. Um, so again, giving back to the community. Uh, doing it with nothing in return, right? Looking for nothing in return, but what happens is <laughs> it comes back tenfold to you, right? Um, and it's learning too. So again, when you're doing that and you're bringing um, your peers with you, you're, you're sort of learning different uh, skill sets within uh, what's needed to run a business. No, that's perfect. That's great. Um, and, and I am all fully on board on that. I believe that as well, just like, hey, the one little thing really does make a huge impact across. Like it, it's gonna come back tenfold. Um, there was something you mentioned when you were talking there, you, you talked about the military instilling some of that with honor, um, but there's a few other things that are transitionable skills that are transferred from military to ownership of a small business. Um, are there any others other than the ones that you mentioned that you, you'd like to, to add to that list of transferable skills? Yes. Yeah, so doing work with Lowe's, um, you know, we probably do 25,000 dishwashers a year. Um, and, and to be able to do 25,000 dishwashers, you, we've created a standard for that, right? So uh, again, I remember back in boot camp, you know, uh, why did we do certain things? Why do we have to hold our food tray a certain way with our elbows? Well, it's because that's the way you hold your rifle while you're marching right so when I look back at the different things just the, even that two and a half months taught me was you know process right procedure standard so the, the military has that I mean again it's it's huge that um, I would think a, someone coming from the military would, would make a better business owner than someone without that background just because the military has taught them the standard process and how important process is, and then procedures. You know, those three things are huge in business. Um, and, and then to be honorable as well. You know, again, these guys and women are fighting for our country. Uh, they're putting their lives on the line for us. Well, again, that means they not only love their country, but they love people, right? Uh, so um, those three things, standard, process, procedure in a business is huge. Mm -hmm. No, that's perfect. And yes, it does. Um, I was a mechanic in the Air Force. I'm in HR now. Made the, you know, the likely transition. But like, I still remember pulling out, I don't have any of them, but a big old, every time I'd pull on a piece of equipment, we had a big old TO that we had to pull out. And it was everything that we had to do from a process, procedure, standardization, like everything was in that book. Now, you don't get that book mm. as an entrepreneur, but there's the research out there. There's the things to follow. There's the state regulations, everything around there from standards. And, and, and procedures as you come out of the military you already know you have to find that like every time you roll that thing in you know you have to do it every time you walk into a building you know you're about ready to do some any training you do there is a book that has to be brought out so you at least know that and that is something that is instilled in you and that is a, a great transferable skill which i would agree is is 
probably one of the better ones when it comes into starting your own business because there's a lot of research as you brought up that goes into that. Um, so we've talked a lot about starting business. We've talked a lot about your journey. We've talked about um, the transferable skills, lessons learned, uh, a little bit about apprenticeships, but I want to jump back to apprenticeships here in a minute, but let's talk about how to kind of drive and increase bis businesses in, in, in consumers, right? So how do you, let's say, let's go back and think about when you started as a small pickup truck pro or any advice you'd give to somebody that is literally going to open their garage and head on out to start this, the small business. What is your advice or what do you, can you instill about driving and increasing your business as well as your consumers? So back then it was a lot different, right? So again, you're talking years and years ago. So uh, I would say today we're, we're turning down work. We can't get to work right now. That's how much work. And again, we do everything. So whether it's tile, drywall, plumbing, electrical, mechanical, building, garages, we, we do it all. Um, and we can't get to it all, right? And, and other companies are in the same boat. So uh, what helped me back then was, uh, again, I was an honorable man. I, I did what I said I was going to do. Uh, again, didn't rip anybody off, right? I was always fair with my prices. Um, and then I did a great job. I made sure I did a good job and I owned it, right? So uh, if I did something wrong, uh, I would fix it. Uh, if something happened after, uh, I would go back, no charge. So it's, it's all about your word, right? So it's, it's you as a person, as long as you have good integrity um, and, and you're going to do the right thing, people know that, they're going to call you back. They're going to refer people to you. Um, but again, in this day and time, you you don't have to do nothing. Like the, the, the business is going to come to you. If, if you put your phone, if you could write your phone number on the side of a truck with a, with a, with spray paint and say that you do X, Y, and Z, and, and, and you're going to be flooded with calls. Um, the other thing is uh, to grow your business in this day and time, you could work underneath another company. So again, we have affiliates that we give work to. So we get the work from Lowe's um, as long as those affiliates uh, you know, they have their insurance and, and, and everything's in line. We give them jobs just like Lowe's gives them to us because there, there's so much work out here. It's, it's unbelievable. No, that's re really good advice. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that real quick. Cause I know you've gone through the process. I know the process has changed a little bit with, with Lowe's, but just in general, um, we're talking about driving and increasing business. I, I love the joke right now about, you know, painting, spray painting your number on the side of the truck and you're going to yeah, get business. Yeah. But what are some tools that people could use outside of that to kind of maybe draw up some business, maybe some leads, right? Like how do they do some lead generation? Like I want to get into this, 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 this skilled trade business front. Like what are some ways to, to kind of draw those up? So again, back to, you know, back when I was in business, there wasn't the internet, right? So now, uh, social media is huge, right? So you put something on uh, social media, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, whether it's any social media, um, you're going to automatically get calls. Again, biggest thing is family members too. So again, if, if you have family members, friends, um, that's great because they know you, right? They know that you're an honorable man or that you're, you're going to stand behind your work. So again, that's the easiest and most economical way, because obviously if you're gonna start your own business, probably 90% of the people don't have just a bank account flooding with money, right? Wanting to just dump it into a business. So from an economical standpoint, using the relationships you have, reaching out to people that you know, letting them know that, hey, trying to get a business off the ground, we would appreciate you know any um, leads or, or anybody you can send our way, but then social media you know, uh, it's huge. Uh, and I see it now, like if I'm on social media, it's constant and, and people that I'm friends with, it's not like ads on social media. I just mean posting something and then friends sharing it and friends sharing it. And before you know it, it's out there and then making sure you do a good job and asking that customer for a referral, yep. you know, maybe offering a discount for a referral because all of that's organic growth, right? You're not having to pay. You could pay Google, uh, you know, thousands of dollars and they'll go promote your business. There's plenty of other ad campaigns that'll do that, but you can do it yourself and not have to spend that money um, organically. And that's what sort of what we did with Lowe's. You know, we went into Lowe's and took care of the customers um, 
you know, and, and now they call us back, um, you know, for something that Lowe's doesn't offer, you know? So um, I, again, you do a good job. People are going to call you back. They're going to refer you. Uh, and, and it doesn't cost any money, you know? Yeah, no, that's great advice. And I, I think it, it's, it's so true. And in, in, unfortunately in this industry, right? Like if you do a good job, you're probably going to get a referral because there are so many bad stories around stuff in skill trades, unfortunately. Um, but if you, you do a really good job, you do, you get that business, you kind of draw that up. Um, so just a reminder to everybody, if you have any questions, uh, please put them into the chat. We're going to do a last call for questions. If you have any questions for William, as we've been, as we've been talking through everything, please, uh, feel free to throw those into the chat now. Um, and we're going to jump into apprenticeship because both the questions that we have right now are around apprenticeship, right? So one is, uh, about Lowe's and apprenticeship, which we'll cover here in a little bit. Um, but the other one, um, is really, you know, do you work with multiple apprenticeship programs that kind of generate into individuals to work for you? We do. So we have our own apprenticeship program here. Um, um, I think we have 14 or 15 um, individuals in that program, right? And we're pulling um, those people from high schools um, or and or colleges. Now, that's where we're, we're sort of um, promoting it, right? But Again, anybody off the street could come into an apprenticeship program. And it's sort of neat because you're getting paid to do it, right? My daughter's in college right now, and I'm having to pay <laughs> for her to go to college to where here, if, if someone wanted to come here for an apprenticeship program, we're going to put them on a path. Um, it's outlined, and, and we're going to pay them to do it. Um, and there's a lot of other companies out there um, that, that do it. But uh Again, there are some tech colleges, but again, the, the kicker is to your point that you said earlier that there's not a lot, there's not enough, I should say, um, apprenticeship programs and or colleges, tech colleges, there's, there's, there's not enough. And the kicker is you still got to have that on the job training, right? So to be licensed in this state and in multiple states in the United States to sit down for an MEP, which is mechanical, electrical or plumbing and or a general contracting you have to have on the job experience. You can't just have tech college experience. You have to have on the job. Um, you know, so the, the best, if, if, you, if they wanna do something that requires a license, the best uh, opportunity is gonna be to go out and, and work for someone. No, perfect, that's great, yeah. and and. And really, you know, the, the question was really around the apprenticeship piece, but also just, you know, we know where the skilled trades candidates kind of, it's, it's hard to find individuals that you do it. Five individuals are leaving the industry right now to the one that's coming in. So, yeah. and, and it's not just in, in skilled trades either. I mean, you're looking at it from a perspective of just a, a worker shortage across the United States right now from the same type of ratio that's kind of happening from uh, baby boomers to Gen Z, Gen Y. It's kind of all happening. It's a perfect storm is what we'll call it. Why, why not? Um, but it, it's kind of happening across, across the board. Um, so that was really where that question was kind of going was what really like, how do, if you, how do you staff your company? And you answer that perfectly with saying like, we have multiple apprenticeships that we work with to kind of help to bring in the right individuals. Um, so this question is not with plumbing, but it is a good question because I do have a, a, an old sergeant, um, actually two of them, old two tech sergeants that now own one of these businesses. Uh, one's in Florida and one's in Valdosta, Georgia. Um, but uh, Brian actually had a question. He said, any insight uh, to home inspection industry? Uh, he's thinking about starting his own business in the inspection business. Um, do you have any insights or anything you could share with Brian about uh, doing that? There's a big need for it. Um, and it's an easy, um, it's an easy business to start. Again, I think there's online classes for it, um, which could be done at night, you know, whenever there's time, um, and there's good, there's real good money in it. Right. Um, and we can't get to all of the work, but so that was part of how we sort of generated some business because these home inspectors, uh, you know, when they give the report to the, to the buyer and or seller, a lot of that work's got to get done, right? So um, we would generate a lot of business for that. So that's a great, that would be a great business really to get into. And, and again, it's backed up, especially in the commercial side. So if, if you could appraise uh, commercial buildings, you know, it, it would even be bigger because one, you can generate a lot more money 
um, per inspection. Um, but there's classes out there and there's programs out there that'll set you right up with the actual program and everything where you're entering in the information. So um, that's a fairly simple, uh, again, you, you have to be licensed, but it's not like a licensed plumber because you're more licensed as a home inspector. So now you're, you know a little bit about everything in the home to where you're not sort of dedicated to one trade, you're, over, you're sort of overlooking all the trades. Um, so I, I think that's a great opportunity. Yeah, and I think it also talks back, you know, one of your things that you talked about was one of the transferable skills was standards and procedures, right? Like, oh, how does that not fit perfectly into somebody that has done QA for the military, right? Like, it's like perfect. Um, if it's right in there, because you got standards and procedures that you got to follow and you're, you're to the book. Um, another question we have, and it's a really good question because it's really about expansion, right? So it's, it's one of those, like, how did you, basically the question is when you got started in your business, at what point did you have to start hiring office staff? Like, how do you know to start doing that? How do you know to kind of bring in somebody or did you outsource that to handle the HR, the payroll and other tasks? Yeah, no, we did it in house. So really what it was, so I did it all right and, and, and did the day to day and, and then came back and did all of that. Uh, what it took was for, I had to have enough trucks on the road to include myself to generate enough money to be able to pull me out. Same would be said if you didn't want to get pulled out, you've got to be able to generate enough money um, to be able to pay someone to come in and do that or, or farm it out. Either one, there's a cost there, right? So you know, if, if you've got to pay somebody, you know, five or six or seven hundred dollars, um, that money's got to be generated through whether it's one or two or three more trucks um, on the road. Right. So uh, I stayed in the field until there was three, tr three trucks besides mine. So I couldn't come out of the field because two trucks couldn't generate what I needed to make to come out of the field. Three trucks could back then generate what it took for me to come out and, and work in the office solely. Um, and again, back to your, you know, the, the earlier question, you said, what does your day look like? Well, back then my days were 15, 16, 17 hour days to grow the business. Um, and again, that's just something I chose, right? So, uh, but that's sort of part of it, right? You've got to be able to generate enough uh, and depending on what area you're in, um, from a bookkeeping and a scheduling though, there's there's different opportunities out there. You could get part-time bookkeepers. Again, remember too, with the internet now, scheduling is a lot easier. There's a lot of programs right now. So technology in this day and time to start a business versus 25 years ago, it's it's amazing what, you know, as far as we've come with the technology. Perfect. That's great advice. And I, I think it is, it, it's based off of your business needs and where you're kind of going and, and you, you ultimately are going to know that, that where that points at and really it's going to be based off revenue for sure. Um, there was a question and we talked about this a little bit about generating leads, increasing business. Uh, I, I had a feeling this one was coming and I think some of your, your customers from Lowe's could be very happy to hear you uh, kind of talk a little bit about this, but one of the questions was how to get jobs from Lowe's. How do you, how, how does that work? And I, I'm sure the process has changed, but if you know a little bit about it, do you mind sharing just a little bit about it? Yeah. So I don't know how it is really now. Uh, I, I got a friend of mine was in a meeting and heard that they needed a plumber back then when I got involved. But what I will say is you could go to, you could probably go onto the internet right now and type in uh, Lowe's vendor or, um, you could go into a Lowe's store and they would give you an email address of who you needed to email that you were interested, whether it was installing blinds, doors, windows, millwork, um, again, water heaters, cabinets. There's, it's, it's un, people don't understand what fences, decks, uh, you really don't realize how much Lowe's actually installs. Um, so it's it's fairly simple uh, to to be a provider for Lowe's. Now you got to qualify. You got to pass a background check. Now military, you know, I would hope that most of our military, right, are good, honest people that haven't been in trouble. So Lowe's is going to run a, a thorough, thorough background check because they're sending you into customers' homes. 
Uh, second, um, that's the biggest thing, right? And then it, whatever need is there. So if, if they need an installer or an installation company for the different categories that Lowe's offers, yeah. they're going to bring you on. Because listen, Lowe's is in the same boat as I am. <laughs> if, if, if 10 people were to show up at my door right now, we'd hire them right now, as long as they could pass a background check. Lowe's is going to tell you exactly what insurance requirements you have. They have a platform. So it's not like you got to go out and buy some fancy um, you know, technology program. Lowe's has a program, right? They're going to give you access to that program. Um, so it, it, it's, it's, it's really simple. You just got to go to whatever individual store that is near where you live um, and, and, and talk to one of the, the assistant store managers or the store managers, and they'll be able to get you the email address um, of, you know, who, who they need to talk to. And again, Lowe's is very quick to respond to those emails too. Perfect. Yeah, no, and I would agree with that. Uh, I definitely would say go to the stores. If you didn't know, uh, and, and some people uh, may not know this, but inside the indoor lumber area, if you go over to the lumber area where all the lumber's at, there's a desk over there and it's called the pro desk. That pro desk that's where you need to go. Go talk to those uh, fine gentlemen and women that work for us at the pro desk. They're going to be able to get you hooked up with some opportunities, with some jobs. Um, there's also the website, which is Lowe's.com. It has the installers program on there. But I say, if you really want to get your, your foot in the door, go talk to the pro desk individuals. They're going to help you out. Every single store has a pro desk. They're there. They're there to help our pros. Uh, William probably walks in and probably sat on our, our stools in front of the register plenty of times ordering bulk, uh, bulk product, uh, but it's a great way to be able to get involved in that local store and what they're doing um, and be able to get your name in there. So it's a really good way to do that. Um, sweet. So we do have a question and I, was, I, was, I had a, a feeling that this one was going to come because I've just this morning, I'm not even kidding you, I used this app this morning to go ahead and ask because I'm trying to put a deck in and I'm just not finding enough time for myself to do it. So it's time to maybe see if I can find somebody. So um, you mentioned using some good tools out there to help grow your business. Um, this individual is aware of Thumbtack. What are others and do you recommend being on those platforms and kind of focus on just a few? <clears throat> um, yeah, like Lowe's has one that's porch, right? So um, Lowe's per se, their employees really can't refer or recommend because then if from a liability standpoint, if something ever went wrong or whatever, so they're part of porch. Uh, so again, you, you totally could, could, could do those different things, but there's a cost there. Uh, porch isn't very expensive. Um, but, but there's, there's a cost there and you could totally do porch thumbtack. I, we don't, I don't know a lot about that because we don't, again, we don't, have to we don't we do no advertising zero right um we have a website um and, and it probably needs to be updated a little bit um again what i'm going to say is and, and again i understand again when you go in to start your own business it, there's a fear there there's a worry there right like am i going to be able to support my family I, am i going to be able to replace the income that i'm getting right now um there's handy Okay, so they could go to handy.com. Lowe's uses Handy, right? So Handy, uh, we used to install toilets for Lowe's. Well, now Handy installs toilets. So you could go be a handyman through Handy. They're going to give you the jobs and they're Lowe's customers, right? So you're just working through Handy's platform to do business for Lowe's customers. Um, so that's another opportunity. Um, what I would say is any anything like Thumbtack, Porch, any of those are fine. I just want to truly tell people that once you jump out there, you will not have no problem filling your calendar. I promise. No, that's great. And it's good to know that. Like, I mean, that's something that as you kind of, you, you kind of think, start thinking about this, you know, you, you brought it up, there's a concern, right? You're, you may have a full-time job right now and be leaving that full-time job to go into to this space and you still need to provide for your family, but you, you have that entrepreneur spirit. So just knowing that that's the, the kind of um, environment that's out there right now is really good for everybody on this call. Um, 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and pretty much wrap it up a little bit. The last two questions we have, which I'll cover on, on a slide here in a second, but I want to go ahead and, and take a pause and see, William, is there anything that you'd like to add or anything that you'd like to close us out with? So thinking back and you, and you asked me, you know, one thing that I had learned. So back then, I sort of did jump out and leave my job and went and, and, and got the opportunity to, to, to buy into this business and took the business over. Uh, way back when it was a car cleaning business, whatever, and it was tough, right? Um, so if anybody that's on, on this listening and, and you have a job right now, what I would say is if, if there was one piece of key advice that I could give anybody is go get a part-time job. So if you want to be a plumber, if you want to be an electrician, if you want to do handiwork, go do it while you still have a job because then it gives you the opportunity to try different things, okay? Um, but it, it also allows you to have extra income. So you're not just leaving your job, jumping into starting a business, right? Some people have the attitude of, well, I want to just do it and start it. And that way I'm all in and I get that. But while you have a job, it's easier to start your business while you have a job. So if you're going to start a handyman business, keep your job for six months and do jobs on Saturday or when you get off work depending on what your shifts look like, okay? Um, start doing the research now, get the tools you need now, figure out what you wanna do, and then do it part-time while you still have your job. And you're gonna quickly see that you'll know when it's time for you to leave your full-time job to go full-time with your business. So, yeah, no, that's perfect advice. Well, I, I want to say thank you for joining me. I, it was a, a pleasure talking with you about this topic around starting your business. It's one of those topics that comes, um, I get asked about a lot when we start talking about skilled trades because a lot of veterans come out and they're like, well, I, I don't really want to go back to having a boss. Like, I want to start my own business. And it, it is something that a lot of veterans do when they, when they come out of service. So, I appreciate you, you hanging with us today, William, uh, being able to share some of your knowledge, some of your experience. Uh, it was it was great to see you again and, and really do appreciate it. Um, it. Dan, Danielle, if we put up the slide here, because William actually just let us right into this slide for me. Uh, and I really appreciate it because he was talking about having a job while getting your your your, your experience in the skilled trades. Um, and Lowe's uh, actually has a program that is phenomenal. It's called Track to the Trades. Uh, it is for individuals at Lowe's. Uh, you can be full-time, you can be part-time. You just have to be with us for six months before you can start this program. But we will pay, Lowe's will pay for you to get your pre-apprenticeship in these five key areas. Uh, and then when you're done, we'll actually help you kind of get a, a front leg door out uh, with William or another provider. And we'll actually help you get an apprenticeship uh, and allow you to go do that apprenticeship with them uh, at the same time. So uh, William, I appreciate you leading me right into the chart of the trades here. Um, it's great, but it's a great we, program. We've got some people from that and it's worked out great. Phenomenal. That's even, that's even better. Look, that's, that's proof right there that it's a, yeah. it's a great program. So I did want to bring this up and I didn't want to talk about this. And then the next one was the last question that we had. So we'll go to the next slide here. Um, and the last question, Dan, I appreciate it was around DOD skill bridge programs. Lowe's does have DOD skill bridge programs. There are Oh, my last count, I saw almost a thousand DOD skill bridge programs across the country. A lot of them actually focus into the apprenticeship piece too. So if you are interested in trade skills, Lowe's does have DOD skill bridge, but if this is the skill trades, I wouldn't recommend our Lowe's skill bridge program for that. I'd say, hey, use your skill bridge and go get some apprenticeship and some, some, some time with that. That's a great way to kind of be able to, to bridge that gap uh, as well. But let's talk about next steps, right? So what, what can we do next? One, you can learn more about the trades by going to wearegenerationt.com. So again, that's wearegenerationt.com. Phenomenal website to be able to, to learn more about the trades. You can even take um, a uh, personality kind of quiz to find out which trade is best for you. Um, and then you can connect with your USO Pathfinders transition specialist to navigate a um, transition into the trades. Any of those uh, career specialists are going to be able to get you in touch with us here at Lowe's, as well as um, just be able to help you along the way as you kind of guide and go into uh, the skill trades and start to explore this journey that you may have. The last one is if you have any questions and you'd like to reach out to us here at, at Lowe's for uh, opportunities with jobs, opportunities with 
Uh, you track the trades, DOD skill bridge, military recruiting at Lowe's.com. And one of our fantastic veterans or military spouses will reach out to you and be able to talk with you about your career progression and where you're trying to go. And then as well, William has uh, been gracious enough to provide his his uh, website down there. So if you have any questions, you can reach out and you can check out ReliableServicesUSA.com and be able to hit the contact us button and reach on out to them if you have any questions as well. Without further ado, I appreciate it, William. Everybody, thank you for coming out.